that she wants Why can't my life be the same? In my dreams there is romance and passion But instead he keeps playing these games Forever gone and spiraling circles round and round A knot up and down He doesn't notice this beautiful girl on his arm Is looking around to find something better, someone that to get her away from the world she is in to a place of excitement and pure enticement and naughty fun cardinal sin. song number three on today's MSI. So let's go ahead and bring Ken Scott in, find out what he thought. Ken, what do you think of track number three? Well, uh, I'm a big fan of the Spanish guitar. When I heard this, I uh, knew I was going to like it, uh, and I did. I liked it a lot. It felt like something made for the Broadway stage. It would have been, I think, a good Broadway musical, uh, a number in a good Broadway musical. The voice, of course, I thought was I did nothing wrong with it. I thought it was great. Uh, again, the voice sounded like someone that you would uh, uh, find at, at any given uh, musical on Broadway uh, tonight. Tonight, right? Yeah. Um, I thought once it got into the song, um, it, it was maybe a tad slow. I, I kept wanting the tempo to pick up just a little bit, but maybe that's just me. It just seemed like it was dragging just a little bit. But overall, um, I, I happen to be a fan of Broadway musicals. I, I do a lot of uh, work for the Broadway, and over the years, as a result, I've become a big fan. So, yeah, I mean, wow, what a great choice selection of music today. I've loved everything I've heard. So, yeah, I thought it was great. All right, well, we're glad you enjoyed them all, Ken. Ian, yeah. what, what did you think of uh, track three? You see, I didn't think... Broadway, I thought like Desperado or Once Upon a Time in Mexico, you know, the Robert Rodriguez, I can't even say it, films. Um, I loved that Spanish guitar playing. The actual tone of the guitar, the performance was just fantastic. Loved it. 
Um, what can I say? I mean, listening to this, it put a smile on my face. I loved the little bit of tongue in cheek in the lyric, the little bit of naughtiness in the lyric, the vocal delivery. It all just sat so well together. I mean, the mix I, I thought worked. I mean, I, I'm not an expert on mixing this sort of music, but I could hear everything the mandolin, the castanets, the saxophone, all the bits and pieces that are sort of playing in there were, were, were there to be heard. And the use of the breaths as sort of little timers in the background over the first verse and. Uh, Everything just worked for me. This clicked. And it's not the sort of music I generally sit down and listen to. But I think someone should tell her that Lola was actually a bloke at the end of the kink song. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, Ian. A very good point. I appreciate your thoughts on that. We'll make sure to get just her so. a note. We'll make sure just to get so. her a note and let her know. All right, Tommy, what did you think of uh, track three? Um... I liked it. It was a little off center, a little tongue in cheek, as Ian said. Um, the subject material was good. The vocal was uh, very well performed, and the production was good. Now, I'll tell you what I don't like. The intro was way too long and way too sparse and too serious for such a, a light touch on, on this type of cabaret type of song. Um, the bass was playing some interesting stuff. It didn't stick out enough in the mix. There was not enough top-to-bottom separation. The solo instruments need to be brought out more. Um, the vocal, she's doing a great job, but it needs to be treated specially. This whole thing lacked depth and, uh, and clarity in the mix to me. But despite that, I mean, the production with the castanets, the, the, the horn ch uh, solo. Um, it definitely, you know, caught my attention, and it's just off kilt enough to, to keep me interested. And the background, her backing, and the lead into the background of that, that the second uh, um, lead line that was sort of tucked underneath. I mean, the vocal mix was probably the only thing that I really liked mix-wise. But still, it's, it's, it's... The reason why I think Ken thought it should be a little faster is because in a song like this, you need to hear that percussion. You need that percussion, the castanets, the tambourine, the stick work. You need that to move it and to accentuate what the singer is saying. Click, click, you know, whatever. It, it, it didn't have the, the authentic Spanish feel to it, and it, 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 it just lacked in the mix. I think this needs just a, a cut the intro in half or just leave it out completely, just have it enter with her breath as a production idea, uh, which was very sexy. Um, I think it would, would endear this to me much more. And then all it really needs is a better defined mix. I'm actually going to jump in and say one more thing, actually, before, before we go over it, is that I would have loved to have heard this go absolutely mental at the end. Add a bit of time to it and sort of go all out, you know, with the sort of the Spanish style tap dancing and, and everything that they do. Get that sort of sound in there going, really ramp it up, almost whip it up into a frenzy and then finish it. That's not a bad idea either. All right. Okay, everyone. I appreciate your thoughts on that track as well. The track is named Why Can't I Be More Like Lola? And I know that lower third is a little hard to read, but there's a lot to get stuck in there. The artist's name, or the group's name, is Alexandria Legua and the Sunflowers. I think they could have thought up a shorter name, but hey, it's not my problem. So, anyway... <laughs> We appreciate their sending that in to Music Scene Investigation. Gentlemen, uh, you have one more duty to do, and I know this is going to be a difficult one, as it always is. But you have the chat room to rely on, so you can look and see what they're saying. You need to decide on a song of the week, and I'll leave you to battle it out. Make your case. Who goes first? Uh, that's up to you all. Well, for me, it's between one and three. Well, uh, I two, I think two, it's between, I'm sorry, for me, it's between one, two, and three. I mean, um, <laughs> that, 
that's the kind of week I'm having. No, I want to say on the third song, uh, the, the the introduction, the long introduction, I thought that that would have played okay as a Broadway tune because then you've got the people dancing on the stage to it, building up to whatever the scene is. So I think it would have worked better you know, on the stage than the music. It might have made more sense versus something that plays on the radio. I just wanted to point that out. But I don't know. I agree. Um, I agree with that because I was thinking film and I thought, you know, build up into a film and sort of run into the club or whatever, you know. Same kind of thing, uh, stage, film, yeah, just put something that there's some drama attached to it, a musical of some kind. Um, I, I got to say, uh, I really didn't think uh, anything was going to pull me away from number one. And then number two, I thought, wow. Uh, but I don't know, I really like that third one a lot. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's wh where I'm leaning right now, unless you guys can push me another way. What do you well, think, Tom? You want to push? I don't know if I... Maybe. I could try. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't disagree with you. I mean, there's a lot of things right about song number one, except it's not as interesting as song number three. And even though I, I, I you know, put down the mix and, and, and cited a lot of things wrong with it, what makes it so good is the fact that the elements are all there. And that's what I'm going to go by. I mean, the vocals in song number one were too affected. Matter of fact, the whole thing was a, a little over, over affected for me. This, you know, the mix is, is, is maybe misguided or um, quick, you know, or whatever. I still think, you know, I mean, as a song, especially since we're, you know, we go by best song, it's a good song, but uh, that intro is just way, way too long. But as far as interesting and listenable and uh, production-wise, I'd have to go with number three also. All right, so we got a definitive for number three, a Ken Wanning pushed from number three, and an Ian who is... I'm number three, I think. I mean, it put a smile on my face, this show. It's different. It's interesting. I think, you know, it, it can find a market in, as we said, show or film or something along that line. Whereas number one, I think we all agree, was a little bit dated and um, needed a bit more work than this one would. So okay. definitely number now three. Now I'm for song number four. I just, I'm for song number four now. <laughs> that's, that's the next show. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right, so so did Sorry. did they push you away from your choice, Ken? Or are you you still hanging in there? Well, they they tried really hard to push me away, didn't they? Uh, no, I mean, yeah, a three. I mean, I loved them all. I mean, it, it almost didn't seem fair. They were to me champion songs on any other week. All three of them, uh, in my opinion. Um, but uh, but yeah, the fact that they all landed together on this particular day, I, you just have to go with your gut. And I've got a big one. <laughs> so I'm going to go to number three. All right. Well, there you have it. Song number three, the longest combined artist name and song title, is <laughs> our winner, Alexandria Legois and the Sunflowers with Why Can't I Be Like Lola is our song of the week on this week's MSI. Ken, wonderful to have you with us. I really appreciate it and love it every time you come on, man. My pleasure. It's always, it's always fun, especially the lead up to the show. And, uh, you know, the near heart attacks that lead up to the show. And then afterwards, the fun we have during the show is great, too. Thank you. And if you want to find out more about uh, Ken and what he's into and doing these days, you can go to thatvoiceguy.com. When's that movie coming out, Ken? Do you know? Well, it's still undetermined. I've got uh, a, cop a copy on DVD downstairs. Uh, but uh, the actual final, it's TBD. All right. TBD. Well, we yep. will be looking for it, and uh, hopefully we'll see it real soon. Well, I will, let me throw this in. I will say that you can see a trailer for the movie. The trailer is actually about a year and a half, two years old. That's how long they've been making this movie. Um, the movie's called Maladies. Just go to IMDb. You can find the trailer. Uh, it will not feature any of my parts because I was a late edition, of course, but you can get a sense of what the movie is going to be like when it does come out. And they're saying that it's going to be sometime this year, so we'll see. Oh, <laughs> all right. All right. Sounds great. And I uh, want to thank everybody for being with us on this week's MSI. I'm going to ask uh, Ian who our guest panelist is for next week. Ian? 
I'm looking now because do you know what? It's Lee Hegarty again. He's returning actually for a booked one rather than a standing one. Absolutely. That's very cool. So we look forward to seeing both Lee and everyone out there next week on Music Scene Investigation. We'll play out with Why Can't I Be More Like before Lola. Before we do, before we do, we're going to answer Frozen's question. Oh, please. And do. the hit list is when? Hit list is Wednesday, the 11th of July at 5 30 p.m. Eastern. 10.30 p.m. GMT. We want to make sure you tune in to MSI Radio for that because that's the only place you're going to be able to find it. Well, unless, of course, you go to our partner, Butterflies Radio, you'll be able to hear it there as well. Oh, and you can go to uh, Indie Music Bus's front page. You'll be able to hear it there. So uh, there are plenty of places to find it, but we'd like to see you here at MSI, MusicScenInvestigation.com. That's, again, Wednesday, the 11th of July, 5.30 p.m. Eastern for Hit List. So, so when you said the only place to see it, you lied. Yeah, pretty much. Liar. Uh, that's the way I am, y'all. You should know that by now. All right, You're everybody. A little bit like Mitt Romney. That, no, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. We'll tune in again next week, and we'll have some more great music on MSI. Thanks for being here, everyone.